It was a quiet night, and I was home alone. My family was out of town, and I was enjoying the peace and quiet. I was sitting in my living room, reading a book, when I heard a strange noise coming from the basement. At first, I tried to ignore it, thinking it was just the wind. But the noise continued, and it sounded like someone was trying to break in through the basement window. I got up from my chair and cautiously made my way to the basement door. I hesitated for a moment before opening it, not sure if I wanted to see what was making the noise. But my curiosity got the best of me, and I slowly made my way down the stairs. As I reached the bottom of the stairs, I saw that the basement window was cracked open. It looked like someone had broken in, trying to gain access to my house. My heart was pounding in my chest, and I could feel the adrenaline pumping through my veins. I knew that I had to act fast to protect myself. I quickly closed the basement window and locked it. As I was turning around, I saw a shadow moving in the corner of my eye. I froze, not knowing what to do. I tried to make out the figure, but it was too dark to see anything clearly. Suddenly, the shadow moved again, and I heard footsteps coming towards me. My heart was racing, and I knew that I had to get out of the basement as quickly as possible. I turned around and sprinted up the stairs, taking them two at a time. I could hear the footsteps behind me, getting closer and closer. As I reached the top of the stairs, I realized that the intruder was right behind me. I could feel their breath on my neck, and I knew that I was in serious trouble. Without warning, the intruder lunged at me, grabbing me by the shoulders and throwing me to the ground. I hit the floor hard, my head spinning. As I tried to get back up, the intruder grabbed me again, this time pulling me towards them. I could see their face now, and it was twisted into an expression of pure malice. I tried to fight back, kicking and flailing my arms, but it was no use. The intruder was too strong for me. I thought that this was it, that I was going to die. But then, I saw an opening. The intruder's grip on me had loosened slightly, and I took the opportunity to kick them as hard as I could in the face. It was a lucky shot, but it connected, and the intruder stumbled backwards, clutching their face in pain. I scrambled to my feet and bolted towards the bathroom, locking the door behind me. I could hear the intruder pounding on the door, trying to break it down. I was trapped, with nowhere to go. All I could do was wait for the police to arrive. Minutes passed, but it felt like hours. I could hear the intruder still trying to get through the door, and I was sure that they were going to break through any second. But then I heard the sound of police sirens in the distance. The intruder must have heard them too because they stopped pounding on the door and fled the scene. When the police arrived, they found the basement window broken, and there were signs of a struggle in the bathroom. But the intruder was gone, and they were never caught. To this day, I can't shake the memory of that night. The thought of someone breaking into my house and attacking me when I was home alone still haunts me. It was a typical weeknight, and I was home alone for a few days. My family had gone out of town, leaving me with the house to myself. It was nice having some peace and quiet, and I was looking forward to relaxing and enjoying my solitude. That evening, I decided to order a pizza for dinner. I ate a few slices and then crashed out for the night. The following night, I remembered that there was some leftover pizza in the fridge that I could eat for dinner. I opened the fridge and saw that there was only one slice left. I was surprised as I remembered only eating half of the pizza the night before. At first I thought that my mind was playing tricks on me, but then I began to feel uneasy. As I was looking at the pizza, I heard a strange noise coming from the attic. It sounded like footsteps, but they were muffled, as if someone was trying to be quiet. I immediately felt a wave of panic wash over me. I had no idea what was going on, and I felt completely alone and vulnerable. I tried to convince myself that it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, but the noise persisted. I decided to investigate, so I grabbed a flashlight and made my way to the attic stairs. As I climbed the stairs, the noise got louder, and I could hear what sounded like someone moving around up there. 
I was terrified, but I had to know what was going on. I reached the top of the stairs and shone my flashlight around the attic. At first, I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. But then, I noticed that one of the boxes in the corner of the attic was slightly open. I approached the box slowly, my heart pounding in my chest. As I got closer, I could hear someone breathing heavily. I was sure that whoever was in the attic was hiding in the box. With trembling hands, I reached out and opened the box. But to my surprise, there was nothing inside. Just a few old clothes and some books. I was confused and scared, and I had no idea what to do next. I turned around to leave the attic, and that's when I saw it. There, in the corner of the attic, someone was crouched down. As soon as they saw me, they stood up and ran at me, their eyes wild with fear and anger. I was frozen in place, too terrified to move. I managed to break free from my frozen state and ran as fast as I could down the stairs and locked myself in my bedroom. I dialed 911 and waited for the police to arrive. Still scared to death. When the police arrived, they searched the house from top to bottom, but found nothing. The front door was wide open, and it was clear that someone had broken in. I never found out who or what was in my attic that night, but the memory of it still haunts me to this day. I never want to be alone in that house again, and I always make sure to lock all of the doors and windows before going to bed. For context of the story, I am a 19-year-old female. It was a Friday night, and my parents had gone out of town for the weekend, leaving me home alone. I was excited at first, as I saw this as an opportunity to do whatever I wanted without anyone bothering me. Little did I know, it would be the scariest night of my life. After a few hours of watching movies, I decided to take a break and go to bed. I locked all the doors and windows and made sure everything was secure before I went to sleep. I was feeling safe and sound, and I thought nothing could go wrong. But in the middle of the night, I was suddenly awakened by a loud noise coming from downstairs. At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but the noise continued, and I realized that someone was in my house. I was terrified and didn't know what to do. I quickly got out of bed and grabbed my phone, dialing 911 as quietly as possible. I explained the situation to the operator, and she told me to stay on the line while they dispatched police to my house. While I was waiting for the police to arrive, I could hear someone walking around downstairs. I knew I had to be quiet and stay hidden, so I locked myself in the bathroom and waited. Minutes seemed like hours as I listened to the intruder moving around my house. I could hear drawers opening and closing, and the sound of things being knocked over. It was clear that whoever was in my house was looking for something. Suddenly, the footsteps got closer, and I could hear the intruder trying to open the bathroom door. I held my breath and tried to stay as quiet as possible, but the intruder managed to force the door open. Before I knew it, the intruder had hit me hard on the head with an object, and I lost consciousness. When I woke up, I was lying on the floor, disoriented and confused. The intruder was nowhere to be seen, and I could hear police officers calling out my name as they searched the house. I struggled to stand up, feeling dizzy and disorientated. When the police found me, they helped me to my feet and checked if I was okay. I was taken to the hospital to receive medical attention for my head injury. The police searched the house, but found no sign of the intruder. It was a terrifying experience that left me feeling vulnerable and scared for a long time afterward. I didn't sleep that night, and I couldn't wait for my parents to come home. The next day, the police came back to take fingerprints and look for any other evidence. It wasn't until a few days later that they called me to tell me they had caught the intruder. It turned out that the intruder was a neighbor who had been watching my house and knew my parents were out of town. They had broken in, hoping to find something valuable. Although the intruder had been caught, I still couldn't shake the feeling of fear and vulnerability. It took a long time for me to feel safe again, and even now, I'm always on edge when I'm home alone.